Uh, you know, I often think about an image, one of my favorite photographs of President Obama, before he had the title president, when he was Professor Obama, teaching law at the University of Chicago. And it's this image of him at the blackboard with a piece of chalk in his hand, and he's just written the word power. I love that image. It's an inspiration to me. Now, I don't have a blackboard here today, but I do have a formula that I'd like to share with you that distills pretty much everything I know about citizenship. It goes like this. P plus CH equals CI. Power plus character equals citizenship. Let me unpack that for you. Power. All of my work is about trying to ensure that more Americans are fluent and literate in power, what it is, how to name it, how to claim it, how to practice it, and how to understand three of the basic laws of power in civic life. Law number one, power compounds. It concentrates toward monopoly if you leave it alone. Law number two, power justifies itself. At every turn, incumbent holders of power will spin elaborate narratives about why it ought to be that way. Now, thank goodness, then, for law number three, which is this. Power is infinite. Power is infinite. And by this, I mean that in civic life, it is entirely possible, even in the most seemingly unequal situations, to generate brand new countervailing power out of thin air through the magic act of organizing, inviting one or 10 or 100 other humans in a common endeavor. You all know this. You're doing this. And this is part of the story of our times. It's Occupy, the Tea Party. It's the Dreamers, Black Lives Matter. It's the populist revolutions that have upended both our major political parties. It's the incredible surge of civic activism we've seen in recent months. But there's another part of the story, too, which is that at the same time, so many millions of people in this country feel so utterly powerless and utterly cynical. Our republic is bleeding legitimacy. And we, who know a little bit about the body politic, it's our job to stop the bleeding. I invite you to take inventory of your power and privilege, your people power, your money power, your ideas power, your ability to shape social norms. Take that inventory and think about it. You came into this room maybe with a little, you will leave this room with a little more. And when you take that kind of inventory of your power, you face a pretty simple binary choice. Shall I hoard or shall I circulate? I choose circulation. And let me tell you why, so that you can tell other folks why you choose circulation. Because hoarding kills. Hoarding kills everybody including, eventually, the hoarders themselves. But circulators thrive because circulating power turns people who are left out on the outside into co-creators. It activates and animates the talented but not connected. And this kind of inclusion is not altruism. Equal justice is not charity. This is self-interest properly understood because we're all better off when we're all better off. Now, what I just said there is a statement of character. It's also a statement of scientific fact in ecosystems. But when I talk about character, the second part of my formula, I want to tell you what I mean. I'm not talking about individual virtues like perseverance or diligence, as important as those are. I mean character in the collective, how we live together, how we live in public, how we hold a community together. Values and virtues like sharing of sacrifice, service, Reciprocity, contribution before consumption, humility, simple empathy. Now, if all you have is fluency and power, but you're untethered from any moral sense or grounded in character in any way, then you're just a highly skilled sociopath. <laughs> but if you know how to couple your knowledge of power with a commitment to making that knowledge work for everybody, and not just those who already have power, well, then you are a citizen. And I want to talk today about three ways that all of us, from every walk of life, can cultivate more character in civic life. The first is this. We have to set in motion and start a cycle of responsibility-taking. 
The psychologist Terry Warner describes this universal pattern of human relationships in which I accuse you to excuse me. It's everywhere, this accused-excuse cycle. It's in our arguments at home. It's in our arguments in politics. There are some days where it's pretty much the entirety of my Twitter feed. I will shirk responsibility for my side's failings and shortcomings by attacking you for yours. And you then return the favor. There's only one way to break this cycle, it turns out, and it is to break this cycle. Even when you are absolutely certain you're in the right, when you own your peace, you make it possible for the other party to do the same. You set in motion a cycle of responsibility taking, not shirking. Try it. I tried it recently with Glenn Beck, who, as some of you may know, over the last year and a half, has been in the course of this very public taking of responsibility for his part in feeding our toxic, poisonous, polarized politics. He opened, I reciprocated. And we began a conversation, first off air and then on air. And we've become friends. Now, we still disagree on just about every issue. But what we've learned to do is to shed that reflexive, instinctive need for defensive self-justification. We've learned that taking responsibility doesn't burden you, it doesn't weigh you down, it frees you. Well, the second way that we can all cultivate character in civic life is simple. Start a club, any kind of club, on anything, as long as it has at its heart mutual aid and the desire to be useful to someone other than yourself. Because forming character isn't done in isolation, it's done in the company of others, by inviting people in, indeed, by obligating them. For years at Citizen University, we've been running something called the Civic Collaboratory. And it's this network of civic innovators from all across the United States, all different sectors of civic work, from across the left and the right. But it's not just a network, it's a mutual aid society. Every time we meet, several members of the group take turns in rotation, and they present to the rest of the group a project they're working on. And the rest of us have to offer not just commentary or critique, but hard commitments of help, investments of capital of every kind, social capital, intellectual capital, relationship, institutional, even financial capital. Why do we do this? Because in the best possible sense, what goes around comes around. Mutual aid makes great citizens. Well, the third and final way that we can cultivate character in civic life is this. Create shared rituals of spirit and purpose. Think about how we broke bread together last night. Think about that. So many people in this country and beyond are so hungry right now, not just for slow food, but for slow democracy. We yearn for experiences that are intentional, that yank us out of the enclosures of the private self. We need a public culture now that asks more of us, that makes more of us. Last year, our team, a few days after the election, started a regular gathering called Civic Saturdays. Civic Saturday is kind of a civic analog to church. It's not church, it's not synagogue or mosque, but it's about American civic religion, about our creed, our stated ideals. And it has the arc of a faith gathering. We sing together. We talk to the stranger next to us. There are readings of texts that you might think of as civic scripture. Grace Lee Boggs, Martin Luther King, Walt Whitman, Abraham Lincoln. There's a sermon. And what we've learned from Civic Saturday is this. Character is contagious. It is wholly possible for everyone in this room to set off a cascade of civic character today by taking a stand or by taking a knee. We've learned, too, that character, like power, is infinite. It's infinite. When you put character into action, when you serve, when you sacrifice, when you risk your own capital and privilege to benefit those who are currently disfavored, when you challenge and confront the structural systemic inequities in our society that give lie to and betray our nation's creed, in short, when you show up for others, your moral core doesn't get spent and burned down and disappear like fuel. It increases. It expands with use. 
like imagination. It generates more of itself from itself, like art or like love. And that, in the end, is both the beauty and the burden of my little formula. P plus CH equals CI. We who are gathered here today, we know something about how to practice power. We know something about the cultivation of character. Take a good look at each other. Look around this room. We believe still, and we know that America is still possible. For love of country, then, let us circulate what we know. Thank you very much.